earlier this year, I launched Our Horizon. Our Horizon is a national not-for-profit organization that is addressing the issue of climate change in a simple yet globally unprecedented way. And I left my job practicing law to do this because climate change is the greatest challenge of our time. It was earlier this week that I finished a cross-Canada tour where I shared this idea with citizens and communities from coast to coast, and I feel privileged to be here today to be able to share it with you. George Orwell said, in an age of universal deceit, telling the truth becomes a revolutionary act. And that is all I propose to do, tell the truth. For it is not oil companies, it is not the tar sands, it is not pipelines that is causing climate change, it's us, it's humanity. We all share responsibility for this issue. And if we can shape market demand, if we can help people to connect the dots, I think that's a way that we can transform and act on climate change. So this is my tool for helping us all to connect the dots. My organization is working to put climate change warning labels on gas pump nozzles, similar to those we see on tobacco packages, because it's not until we're made to face the reality of what we're up against, it's not until we're made to feel responsible for this, that we will then be able to move forward in meaningful ways. People often ask me, do the warning labels on tobacco packages work? The answer is yes, they do. In 2001, Canada became the first jurisdiction in the world to require visual warning labels on tobacco packages. Since then, our innovation has spread all over the world. In 2009, the European Union commissioned a meta-study, a study of studies. In that study, they looked at over 200 studies from all over the world to conclude that yes, indeed, these labels help to change attitudes and behavior. But our idea is particularly compelling in the context of climate change. And I'll tell you why. So first, climate change can be understood as a problem of no feedback. There is a delay between cause and effect. We burn fossil fuels, emit carbon dioxide today, the consequences of which aren't felt until tomorrow. In the absence of feedback, we fall prey to our cognitive biases. So psychologists know that we tend to prefer interests that are near and small relative to those that are significant but down the road. They call it the current moment bias or hyperbolic discounting. It's one of the reasons we procrastinate and it's one of the reasons we fail to act on climate change. What this idea does is it takes those faraway consequences, be it the extinction of species, drought and famine, or ocean acidification, and through the use of image and text, brings it into the here and now. It helps to mitigate the effect of the current moment bias and takes a problem of no feedback and builds feedback. Two. Climate change can be understood as a problem of diffusion of responsibility. So I emit a little bit, you emit a little bit, you emit a little bit, and so on and so on. As individuals, our contribution to the problem is small, but collectively, our actions alter the chemistry of our planet. Social psychologists know that when responsibility for something is diffuse, so when it's shared among many, we're less likely to act. What this idea does is the placement of the warning label on the gas pump nozzle takes a problem of diffuse origins and quite literally it locates responsibility right in the palm of your hand. If you think about it, there is nothing, absolutely nothing like this out there that connects us to this issue quite in this way and it is a catalyst for change. Last. Climate change can be understood as a problem of externalities. This is a concept from economics that I find is best illustrated by use of example. So, let's say a liter of gasoline costs $1.35. In that price are a variety of costs that the producer had to incur in order to bring that product to market for us, the consumers, to consume. So, some labor had to be paid. There were some machines and energy that went into extracting the oil. It had to be shipped, it had to be refined, it had to be transported to individual retailers, the costs go higher and higher. Finally, there's a profit margin and there are taxes on top of that. 
All that informs that price of $1.35, and that is the signal to the marketplace. Of course, economists know that there are some costs that have been externalized during this process. So, if we burn fossil fuels, we contribute to climate change. Climate change causes a rise in sea level. That then necessitates the spending of billions of dollars to upgrade our coastal infrastructure. Economists know that those costs can and should be reflected in the price of the product that's actually causing the harm. So you might see upgrades to coastal infrastructure as a cost. Maybe there's health costs. Maybe there's property damage from extreme weather, and so on and so on. The costs go higher and higher. In internalizing that cost through something like a carbon tax, we can show the true price of this product to the marketplace. The question is, though, while it's one thing to price the concrete and rebar that goes into upgrading our coastal infrastructure, how on earth do we price something like a species that faces extinction? What is the dollar value of a human life? And while economists actually seek to price these values, we ask the question if our system has become one that knows the price of everything and the value of nothing. We ask, what if there is another way to capture and communicate these values to the marketplace? The answer is, there is. What price seeks to achieve in quantitative terms through dollars and cents, our idea achieves through the use of image and text in qualitative terms. Notice in the abstract that they both achieve the same thing. They both capture and communicate externalities. However, notice the shift in focus. So price tends to answer the question, how does this affect my wallet? How does this affect me? Our idea tends to answer the question, how does this affect others? To the extent that climate change and other ecological crises result from a failure of us to recognize our interdependence and interconnectedness, this idea, this market signal, can contribute to an important cultural shift that lets us address these issues. In fact, it was Adam Smith, economist and moral philosopher, who said, it is in acting according to the dictates of our moral faculties that we necessarily pursue greatest happiness for mankind. This could be an important moral input that helps to transform markets. It takes a problem of externalities and communicates them. This idea at its core is disruptive. So we may worry about climate change, tar sands, pipelines, and so on, but we never question the simple act of pumping gas. There is a complete disconnect. What this does is it takes something that has forever been normal and challenges it. It disrupts it. It forces the question, if not this, then what? It disrupts the narrative and makes space for a new story to be told. So by creating some dissatisfaction in the marketplace, we then stimulate demand for alternatives. Businesses and governments will respond to this shift in demand. And the good news is there is much we can do to address these issues. Alternatives are available. Believe it or not, cars on the road today actually get the same fuel economy as the Ford Model T did over 100 years ago. We just need to be made to want those alternatives. And this idea can be a nudge in that direction. So how are we going to get this done? This is Jonah. I met him uh, during this Cross Canada tour. He's holding something called the Climate Change Champion Medal. And Jonah is going to be taking our idea to City Hall. Our approach is to lobby municipalities to pass bylaws that will require gasoline retailers to place these warning labels on their gas pump nozzles as a condition of maintaining their license. It's a bottom-up approach to change. And the beautiful thing about municipal government is its accessibility. Citizens can take the microphone, and people like Jonah will. There's even a young woman in the audience today that's going to join us and actually speak directly to their councillors for their future. That is me and my grandfather. People sometimes ask, how did you get on this journey? You used to be practicing law. What happened? So it was a little over a year ago that I had a conversation with my grandfather, and his last words to me over the phone were, do what you love. And he left a small sum of money that I used to kickstart this project. I've been worried about climate change for as long as I can remember. And this place is too beautiful to give up on. Scientists tell us that we have changed the concentration of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere, we have changed the basic chemistry of our planet. Our oceans are now 30% more acidic than they were during the Industrial Revolution. 
This is the reality that we find ourselves facing up against. Scientists actually say that we are now on the cusp of a period of mass extinction, and the window to act is small. And so, I ask you, I challenge you to join me. This idea, the warning labels on tobacco packages, exist all over the world. So this is primes to go global too. I think that if we act now, if we act fast, we can actually build a world that we will be proud of to leave behind to our children and our grandchildren. I believe that we, we can be made to feel closer to these problems if we can be made to feel a little more responsible for them, if we could take these hidden costs and make them visible. In fact, sometimes it is the simplest of ideas that have the power to change the world. If we can do this, I believe that we will. I believe that we will change the world. Thank you.